Hello everyone, today I want to show you how to use the filter collection function in Blue Prism RPA. Uh, I come across this problem very often when I'm building automations where you might have like a database similar to the one that we're looking at here where there are literally maybe, I mean this is just 22 items right but sometimes you could, get, you could have a thousand and you're only interested in using certain parts of the information, not necessarily all. It's interesting that uh, Blue Prism does not have any Excel function that allows you to say a filter, like the way you would use it in this Excel itself, right? So in other words, the VBO or ver the, the Visual Business Objects, Excel Business Objects, they don't have anything called um, a filter function they don't have a filter function and that's just interesting so i'm just going to open a vbo an excel vbo you know first of all i'm assuming you already know how to retrieve those if you look well tell you what let me just drag a blank action into this if i wanted to use an excel vbo you know i'd, I'd look for the business object here and, you know, of course, the idea is that you pick the functionality you want. So if you look here, um, there is no, like, function to filter out a particular terminology in all of the pre-built items, which I think is interesting, you know. <laughs> uh, that's a pretty, you know, frequently used functionality, but it's just not there. Even if we take the extended version, we still don't have the filter function in here. So that's why I'm making this video. Um, it stumped me for a while and I, I found a way to get it done, all right? So um, the task is to go to, to go and retrieve this workbook I showed you and pull these items into a collection and then filter out anyone that we like. For example, I might want to filter out only the Ubers because that's what I need to use in my automation, right? rather than just take the whole collection and then start using a loop to delete what I don't want. That, that That's, it's kind of busy, right? Doing it that way. So how do you do that? Well, I'm just going to quickly run through this because, you know, caveat here is I assume that you already know how to use the Excel um, VBOs to get what you want done. And so I'm just going to um, maybe just quickly run through it. So the first thing you do is you, you put in, um, I mean, you direct it to where's, where's the workbook, the source workbook, by using the calculation stage to set the location into this data item. So when you do that, then you can now create an instance, which, you know, the only thing you really need to do is um, open the VBO object, object, choose create instance, and then uh, this enable events is if there's a pop-up, say yes, you know, don't let it stop you from opening it and then put in this handle as a variable, right? And then the next thing is you send it to, you use the open workbook um, functionality. The VBO has that too among the options, open workbook. So you just tell it that the workbook, the source workbook is what I want opened. Use the handle I created and store it in this. This is the workbook name when you get it, right? So you create a data item for that, which is here, right? So all of these three things are outputs and all of these two things are inputs, right? Oh, sorry, this one thing, my bad, is an input, right? This is where, this is the workbook and this is like um, output, right? So best practice, I think you paint this one, that color, I mean, last, at least that's what we do at our firm. You paint this one that color, right? So to continue, after you open the workbook, you want to use this VBO function called get worksheet, worksheet as a collection. And when you select it, you have to put in all these variables. What is the handle? What is the workbook name? What is the sheet name? If you look here, the sheet name is sheet one, right? So you put that there to make sure it gets the right sheet. Then if you wanted to get the headers along with it, you have to set first row header to true. Now, where do you want to put it? You create um, the collection. And, and what I did was 
I created a collection named shipment report and I just uh, I mean you hit that and it, it gets created so what up to this point we get the collection from the workbook and store it inside um, this collection shipment report and then of course we exit the Excel sheets uh, the current Excel that we're in there's nothing to do except add a timeout if it takes too long if it takes more than 60 seconds then crash it if not go ahead and close all ex instances of Excel I like to do that in case you know for whatever reason it remains open and then as a final um, fail safe I use the utility uh, business object called environment and the kill process function the kill process action and then I type in Excel so basically what this page does is it opens an Excel sheet of your preference and stores the data into uh, this location right shipment report so um, I mean best practices you add uh, exception handling and all of that but I'm not gonna go too much into that now right um, so the other thing is that now that I have this report here I'm just gonna run it so you see for yourself set next stage I'm gonna close this because it will cause an error if it's open uh, I don't know if I saved all right so I'm gonna quickly you know make it full speed ahead and I run that and it's gonna very very quickly retrieve the contents of the Excel sheet into this collection here uh, this is an example of uh, a collection that is undefined you can have two types where you actually create it beforehand and this is the other kind where it just takes the form of whatever the input provides it this is an undefined collection so the current values will read whatever is in the excel sheet so this if you look at this you'll find the 22 rows that we were looking at in the excel sheets are here very nicely done right but then i don't like i said i'm only interested in say the ubers i don't want all of this other stuff so what do i need to do the first thing i need to do is i'm putting on another page so it doesn't get you know too busy uh, plus it, it kind of breaks the process down into smaller um, or more readable functionality well I don't want this video to be more than 10 minutes so I'm not, I'm not gonna do it this way I'm gonna just let me just paste this here because I already did this I just walk you through it so the first thing you do is you drag in a collection stage uh, a calculation stage and you set what term are you looking for for example it might be uber right and then you store that into a data item called search term right and then the next thing is you go and look for the utility collection manipulation function uh, sorry object utility collection manipulation and then you pick the filter collection functionality if you remember the page from the main page shipment report is the name of the collection where the data landed right and then where do you want the outputs is on the outputs part you call filtered report that's where I want it in. So I create that uh, collection. So that is different from the one that has all the items. I just want the Ubers. I'm not interested in all the other items. This is the fastest way to do it. But what we're trying to learn in this video is this expression. So I'll kind of make this bigger for you, right? So you write an expression that basically says Holia like. Now let me open that uh, shipment data. So you see it for yourself. Oh, I wish I didn't close that, but I needed to. So I'm saying this column, Holia, right? I'm sorry, here we are. This column, Holia, anything like the search term, filter it out. That's what this expression is saying. So notice that you op it's basically, you have to know your concatenation well. So this is open, open uh, parentheses did I say parentheses double quotes anyway right so you find the first set of double quotes is here but then to put in the search term you need to add all these shall we say delineators to help the, co the concatenations so essentially you're putting the search term inside these double quotes and then kind of using this to allow the script to understand that this is not a duplication right so this is your filter term 
if you are, for example, looking for just one item, of course, you have to adapt it to your <laughs> your own uh, needs, right? I'm sorry, something's here. But once you put that filter expression in here and you go back to this place, all you need to do is um, put in the links to make sure that there's no missing link, right? So again, these two are um, outputs, right? You might put, uh, and then like I said, you know, in my firm, I don't know how you do it. We, we painted this direction, this color, I'm sorry. So again, I'm gonna quickly set next to it. You can see that this filters re filtered report collection is empty. It's nothing here. So when I press play now, it's done, you know? And you can see there are seven items here now. And if we open it, it's gonna be just the Uber. So this is the fastest way for you to get that done. Right. There are ways you can do it with the, you know, <laughs> longer ways to do it. But honestly, I build a lot of automations and this is, I think, the fastest way to get it done. So I hope you find this useful. I can't find anything like this on the Internet. So I thought I would share this to help people who have to deal with this problem. OK, you know, there are other ways to do it, like using loops and to, to remove the unwanted items. But, you know, when it becomes a very bulky collection, it's it does take a bit of time, whereas this take seconds right so i hope you've enjoyed it and you find this useful uh, give me a like give me a follow ask me questions so we can make more videos thank you enjoy your evening bye